The Voiceover with your host, D. Foster III, where we discuss relevant topics that affect the culture with bold, independent commentary. Get ready to be inspired, enlightened, and encouraged. Welcome to The Voice Open Air Podcast. I'm your host, D. Foster III. I want to say what a show we have in store. Listen, before we get started, I want you to like, I want you to share, I want you to follow. I want you to join us every Sunday morning at what time? Every Sunday morning at what time? At 7 a.m. for our Voice of Hope Connection. Voice of Hope Connection, you can get it right here on WPB Media Networks.com. And then following that, we have a Voice of Healing Community Prayer Call. Listen, y'all, it's getting real, and there's nothing like knowing you have a community that you can join in with and you can exchange one for another. That's right. We have the oil, we pour in the wine, and the energy and the healing flows. I am so excited. I want you to like it. I want you to share. I want you to follow. I am excited. I hope that you had a great resurrection because I'm about to start a brand new series. And, uh, you know, we've been in the current and the future of different entities of these seven mountains. And I promised you, and I try to keep my promises. I promised you I was going to get into the current and future state of the church. But before, <laughs> yeah, get uh, in the, <laughs> y'all heard this in the church. Get ready, get ready, get ready, because we coming, we coming, we coming. Listen, before we get <laughs> before we get started, I want to say that Wake Up Global Networks, we can help you honor your shero. That's right. Mother's Day is coming, and mothers, where, what would we be? without mothers and godly women in our life, right? So every year, Wake Up Global Networks has honored the shero of your choice. Go to our social media platforms, that's W-G-N-I-N-C for our X, or Wake Up Global Media for our Instagram, or Wake Up Global Networks for our Facebook, and just sign a little form and say why your shero should be honored and Wake Up Global Networks has something for you to help you honor. Now, all of the information, all of the instructions is going to require you to uh, convince us. <laughs> it's going to require you to convince us that your uh, shero <clears throat> should be honored. And I know most of us have more than one, but take the one of your choice and submit the name and all the information. And I, like I said, those forms are on our platform. Wake Up Global Media, Instagram, W-G-N-I-N-C on X or Wake Up Global Networks on Facebook. All right, I got those out of the way. Thank you for joining us. Like this, share this, follow. Make sure you tell somebody. Make sure you tell, because I'm telling you, you're going to tell after today. So today I want to dive into the current and future state of the church. Church as we know it, not for the most part church as Jesus intended. Now, let me say at the offset, I am very qualified to talk about this subject, if no other subject, because I am what they call a church Yes, I was groomed. That's the popular word. Now. That's that, in that in that the bold word in that the bold word. Now I was groomed as a church baby, which means they train me how to flow in the church. Now let me go back. Did I tell you to let somebody know we're here? Because you don't want to miss this, and uh, you won't tell it, tell it. Tell it, tell it, tell it. Um, we've done politics, we've done media, we're doing the church, and we're gonna hit just about every one of them, the entertainment industry. But anyway, when I was growing up, church was simple. I grew up in my daddy's church, third generation, 
Come here, come, story time, story time, story time. Third generation. And I was groomed to be a pastor. Oh, yes. I was third generation, all of my daddy's side in D.C. Everybody was something in the church. We were big shots. Grandfather was a pastor. Assistant, one of the biggest churches in D.C. till he got his own church, Metropolitan Baptist, which back then was what we call the mega. And I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to mega in a minute. Um, and and uh, uh, my granddaddy's father was the chairman of the Deacon Board at Metropolitan. See, I was groomed for the church. My grandmother, my father's mother, my father's uh, grand, my, my father's mother's father, Dishman, was chairman of the trustee board in Metropolitan. We were big shots in the church. My daddy was the youth pastor of Metropolitan before he got his churches. Oh yes, we were groomed in the church. And so my mama got married and my daddy, well, before I came, they got married and he passed at Mount Sinai Baptist Church. Baptist born, breath, Baptist, Baptist, dead, something like that. I disavow, I disavow, I disavow. Yeah. I mean, we gonna have some fun today. Come on in here, come on in here, come on in here, yeah. So when I was growing up, I spent most of my time at Mount Sinai. Baptist Church. My daddy went there with a few people and they outgrew Mount Sinai. Everywhere my daddy went, they were large. He was, I always say, maybe not the best, like me, not the best speaker or preacher, but he loved people and people just came. He had a knack to draw people. And so he broke ground for Mount Sinai and built a brand new building and soon got called a Galilee Baptist Church. Come on, this story time, this story time got called a Galilee Baptist Church in Walsall, Virginia. And that grew and he was about to break ground there, but he got called to a bigger church, Wayland Baptist in Baltimore. That was back then, before we gave it a name, it was the mega church, the mega church, one of the biggest churches in Baltimore, Wayland Baptist. And there Wayland Baptist, I was groomed for ministry. I preached my trial sermon. And Church seemed so simple. I mean, you know, you go to church, you go through the program, um, sing a couple of songs, preach a preach, 15 minutes, and you're out. Church seemed so simple. Only time I really heard about money is Men's Day, Women's Day. Everybody give $100. That was okay. So once a year, didn't really learn a lot about tithing, but you had your church envelopes and you gave your dues. If you don't remember this, that's good. <laughs> so church back then was simple. You came, you went to Sunday school, you got the word, there was a church family, there wasn't any begging. The pastor was the pastor. This is where I grew up, Baptist. And you had dinner, you had a 3.30 service, and you went home. Church was simple. We loved going to church. We sang on the choir. We ushered. I was on the usher board. I was called to ministry. And I remember I preached my trial sermon. The church, Wayland, probably sit around 1,000, maybe 800 people, 1,000. It was filled to capacity. Bishop Bryant, Jamal's daddy was there, Alfred Vaughn, and everybody was there. And still all of my friends, Bishop Oscar, and still church seemed so simple. Then I started Bread of Life. Come on, it's story time. I'm doing something different today. Story time, come on. Church still seems so simple. Started in a house and ended up on Cathedral and Franklin. 
So I'm not going to go through all. But church seems so simple. And then something changed. And it no longer seemed simple. It seemed corporate. Mm. Story time. Story time. Share this. Like this. Follow this. Story time. It seemed like it went from being simple, singing on Sunday, getting the word, pastor preaching, though you may not understood what he was saying, but you sat there because you had to, your parents, you had to. You sing on the choir, you doodle on the bulletin, right? But something happened. That was church. Though we didn't get nothing out of it, I think we would all agree that was church. And I'm putting this in parenthesis for what we know as church, not what Jesus' mind of is church. But to us, wasn't it? That was church. No stress, no strain, no obligations. We look forward to coming to church. We look forward to dressing up and coming to church, leaving church and go have family dinner, right? But then all of a sudden, church didn't seem so simple. Church seemed like a duty. Church seemed like a task. We went from dudes to three offerings. We went from hearing the word to being entertained. We went from volunteering our services. Come on, story time. Story time, y'all. Don't get mad. Story time. Volunteering our services to demanding our service. And as a result, what seemed like a spiritual environment to grow in, Oh, it was religious, but it sp spiritual, probably learn more in Sunday school. So it was a spiritual environment to grow in. One day we turn around and it's a corporation that you must survive. If I ask you to like, share. Just getting started the current and future state of the church. So I thought, I said, self, when did this transition change? When did it go, in my opinion, and that's all I can speak on, that's what I do on this platform, give my opinion. It went from a spiritual environment. Get the word, sing some songs, though most of them were songs of unbelief, but that's okay. We didn't know no better than that. Preacher preach the best he could, whoever it was. Then we bless be the tide, and we out. But all of a sudden, it changed. I'm not against change. Y'all know I forge change. But like they say, all money ain't good money. All change ain't good change. To change for the sake of just changing ain't good change. To change for Advancement, 
progress is good change. So I say, self, when does change happen? And self said, it went from spiritual, spiritual environment to corporate when the church, you ready? Come on, come on. When the church embraced media. Now, first of all, you know I'm not against media. I'm on media, been on me. So I'm not saying the church should have never embraced it. But being on media brought certain issues because now we have something to compare ourselves with. So we looked at the surge of media. And I'm going to go back for a minute. So all of a sudden we turn on TV and we see ministries like, say, a Swagger, Jimmy Swagger, a Kenneth Copeland. Large crowds, thousands of people on TV across the nation. Mm -hmm. So if I want to be big, because this was the thought, and it's still the thinking of a lot of people. Follow me, the story time, the story time. Did I tell you this, the story time? If I want to be big, then I got to get on TV. Okay, it's, it's, it's called visibility. And, 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 it's called marketing, right? I'm not saying anything against that. I'm not hating on that. I've been on TV. But keep what I'm saying in context. So I, I'm, I, 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 I want to I be big. TV may help me be big. TV may help me be known. Because nobody knows me. And this was the only place I could be successful. Because after all, y'all, come in. I, I told you, I told you I was coming for this a couple of weeks ago. This is the only place that I can do what I do. All right, I'm going to put it like this. A doctor has to have a license. A lawyer has to pass the bar and have a license. A dentist has to have credentials. But I know where I can go and use my charisma. No credentials and get a file. Come in, come in. Because I'm talking about the current state before I get into the future. So the emergence of my, in my opinion, of television, television churches, which, which I'm not against. I believe in marketing. I believe in exposure. But it's how it's used and the motive that it is used. Because there are churches that have grown, and I can think of one in both. They've never been on TV in one of the biggest ministries. So right there, that's a fallacy. But let's continue story time. So now we see the emergence of television ministry. And it looks like everybody on TV back then is big. 
or if they are an evangelist, they have a lot of money coming in. Mm. I'm moving from when church was simple to the corporate difficulties of ministry, especially today. So, I want to be on TV. I wanted to be on TV. I was on TV. I learned a lot about media ministry. Number one, uh oh, here we go. It's very expensive to do it right. So, all right, follow me. So now a generation is emerging around the 80s or the 90s. Internet is coming in. Computers are coming in. Right, this is along with the emergence of TV. And they're not quite the sit and listen and church-groomed babies. So because I want to be big, I got to be creative in my method. And I agree. I've always said the message doesn't change, but the method changes. But I have a problem when the method speaks louder than the message, like getting your hair cut. Who cares? Like pouring syrup on the Bible, really? That's when the method, that's drama. That, that's, that's drama. That's when, in my opinion, the method overrides the message. So in this TV era, in my opinion, money becomes an issue, mega. Because at this point, especially in the 90s, everybody was trying to be big, mega. I mean, you got Doc. When I re remember growing up in Wayland, I don't remember them mentioning how many members. I, I never knew how many members we had. I just knew the church was full. In, in, in the second service, we had two services. And the church was half full in the first service. But I never heard people talk about how many members we had. They used to talk about how good the choir was. Right, how good the choir was. But in the emergence of Wanting to be big. And everything big ain't healthy because a swell, an infection can get big. And I'm not for small. But I'm not for gain. So, come on, this story time. Did I tell you this was story time? This story time. You know you want to share this. So now all of a sudden, I'm growing. I got this exposure. So I got to set in a structure because the bigger this thing gets, the more organized, which I agree, it has to be. So now, out of my quest to be big, I have to set a structure. I got to hire more people. I got to hire a TV camera. It's very, it's very expensive to be on media. Very. The best thing could have happened was the internet. We wouldn't even know who most people were if it wasn't for the internet. Because you can just about get on the internet pennies. And that's what some people need to be on, the internet only. That's it. Because everybody thought, 
being on TV would grow your church. And it did not. It just got you in debt. You have to be called. But anyway, I won't get into that part of it. It's story time, y'all. Because I'm talking about a system that I'm aware of. And then I'm going to read you some statistics. And so everybody was comparing themselves, y'all know this true, with themselves in the 90s. Everybody was comparing that big. And so setting up the structure costs money. So now money has to come to the forefront. I think my, and, and, and of course, with inflation, but, you know, back then, and I'm not saying it should have stayed that way, church had a secretary, a custodian, and as big as well, I think secretary, custodian, two custodians, because they had a nursery school, but if you just count the church, secretary, custodian, Musicians, they didn't get paid like they do now, even with inflation. And our um, the pastor, that was that was it. I'm not saying it should stay like that. I'm making a point. Follow me. I'm making a point. I'm not trying to take us back, but I'm going back because I am going forward. Oh yes, I am. Because I'm just doing the state of it. But oh, I'm going into the future. So television, because that's all we saw. And we thought, because large mega ministries were on television, that it was the television that made a mega. For some that was true, for others it was not true. Creflo Dollar didn't get mega. When he got on TV, he was already mega. I'm just giving you an example of what I know. So now we grow. We have to set this place in structure. We have to hire new members, pastors. We have to hire visitation pastors. So now we grow beyond the budget. Because we got the other stuff included also. We got the other stuff. And I was a part of it. I'm not, I'm not denying it. And I'm not saying it was all wrong. This story time, this story time, this, this story time. And soon, the novelty wore off. Because that's what always happens when stuff is fetish. And that's why you have to, as we used to say, keep pulling a rabbit out of a hat every week. And I still see that today. These past, they pull rabbits out of the hat because the novelty is worn off. And the novelty is when the method, in my opinion, is promoted over the message. What's the message? of getting your hair. Yes, I, I'm i on that. And I don't care. What's the method of getting your hair cut to show what God is? Really? No, you were front and center stage. We couldn't even see Jesus because you sitting in the chair with your, okay, first of all, you got a personal problem. Who cares? I mean, we all have personal problems. I can get a barber come to my place right now. That's, you know, but, but again, the method. You got a problem with one circle of the body. That's very entertaining. And believe it or not, people don't come to church to be entertained. There may be entertainment intertwined with the message. But people don't get up, get dressed on one of the only days off, dealing with the hell and the shiggity, shiggity. I didn't say, I didn't cuss. Shiggity that they deal with to come to see you get your hair cut or for you to pour out a bunch of seeds 
That's because the misfit The method is more prominent in the message. And we live in, follow me, an entertainment. So to retain you, because I can't retain you with routine. I can't contain you with the same old, same old. So to contain you, because I got to contain you, because I got all of this, I got to contain. And you in the picture. So I got to make it very interesting. Because the message is drowning in the method. That's my problem at all. Not the entertainment. I believe in using props and all. I mean, I'd be hypocrite. I use all of that. I believe in that. That helps. But that should just reinforce the powerful message. And see what people don't, that stuff right there is unsustainable because I have right now, I can watch 243 channels. That's what I have on my TVs. And unless there's something I'm interested in, I may like the average person Watch something for 10 minutes. And so now, especially since COVID, now I'm turning the corner. Everybody's scrambling how to contain. So I entertain. Because y'all know COVID really, COVID really, I'm going to have to do a part two on this. COVID really did a number on everything, but especially, and I got to keep doing this, the church. It did a number. Let me read you something. And ask yourself why. And no, everybody's not backslidden. Everybody's not turning away from the faith. They didn't come back. Everybody don't want, not want God. Some people found God. What is this from? I like to read my sources. What is this from? The Gallup. The Gallup. I'm gonna do a part two because I'm not gonna finish today. I'm going into the future next week. Church attendance has declined in most US regions. Three in 10 US adults attend. Three in 10? attend religious services regularly led by Mormons at 67%. And let me read you something very special. Every week, they have almost every week, once a month, seldom, never, Protestant and Christian, that's what I wanna focus on right now, Every week, 30% attend. Almost, almost every week, 14% attend, Protestant and Christian. You don't see the issue here? Almost once a month, 13%. Seldom. Seldom, 27%, never, 16%. Wonder why, 
underwear. Nearly in the same article, nearly all fake seeing declines in regular, and I mean, COVID just like opened up the bird cage, the bird flew out, and the bird ain't looked back since. And there are people out there doing a bird call, come on, back, come on, bird call, and the bird can't even hear. The bird can't even hear. The bird is so far removed, the bird can't hear the bird call. Wonder why. And this pastor that got his hair cut had the audacity to rebuke people that wanted to leave. No, you own people. All right, y'all, I'm gonna read this and then we're gonna pick up from part two of story time. I know you might not tune in, but you might. Because you know you want to hear the rest of what I have to say. Because I'm just touching the iceberg. And I'm not saying every church. There's some great churches and some great pastors doing some great work, preaching a strong word. And people are coming. And that's what people want. That's what people want. That's what people want. That's why people get up and get dressed. Because they want a word for their life. They don't want, they can turn on Comedy Central. They can go get better. They're better comedians than pastors. They're better actors. A decade, two decades ago, an average of 42% of U.S. adults attended religious services every week or every other week. A decade ago, the figure fell to 38%. And it is currently at 30%. This decline is largely driven by the increase in the percentage of Americans with no religious affiliation. No religious affiliation. Can I interpret that? I don't feel religion or religious institution. Affiliation. No religious affiliation. You're trying to make people feel liate what they no longer feel. Why they don't feel it? You're going to have to come back next week for that, in my opinion. 9%, it dropped to 9% in 2000 to 2003 versus 21% in 2021 almost to 23, almost all of whom do not attend services regularly. Still, most religious groups have seen a decline in regular attendance. And y'all know that's true. You look at TV now, the camp, I looked at a church by default, what was it? Must have been Easter Sun Resurrection. The camera never left the podium. They never showed the audience. I've been in media long enough to know what that means. Don't show empty chairs. That's a no-no in media. You don't show empty chairs. You draw the camera. And when I tell you I was waiting to see, the camera never left. And before, a couple of years ago, this church was packed, maybe whole three or 400 people. And we can say that around the country. And even packed churches. still don't have the numbers that they had. Why? Don't tell me people don't love God. And part of it is, I believe people didn't sign up to be a part of a corporate structure. And I know there's a business side to ministry, but there's a spiritual side. That's why the people go. Current state of the church. Ain't looking too good in my opinion. And I believe these, this decline is worse than that. I think very few churches rebounded since COVID and, and, and will. 
and I had a radio show in Prophet John Lewis. I had him on right after the shutdown. And I said, give us the word. What do you think God is saying about the church during COVID? And he screamed, the church has left the building finally. And everybody thought it was, and it was funny the way he said it. It was comical the way he said it. It's more like Elvis has left the building. But little did we know that was prophetic. The church has left the building. But the building won't let the church go because they're still more, they're still expensive. All right, y'all. I'm going to finish part two on next week. Y'all, I told you I was coming for this. I told you. I told you. Because when the entertainment or the method overshadows the method, that's reason to speak out. Because I don't care about your haircut. I didn't come to see you get your hair cut. I came to heal with God. And, and listen, contrary to popular opinion, especially when it comes to this generation, you would think that they'd rather be entertained. I can tell you from experience, and they want to know what God is saying for their life. Without Let me be nice, D. Foster Three. Without the extra crap. Because they can read through the bull. And I know that for a fact. Because you assume, because they're young and they, you know, in the culture, they come to church for God. They don't come to church for the culture. They got the club for the culture. They got their, they, they people for the culture. They got their tribe for the culture. They come to church to hear what God. I know that's not popular because again, that's not, that, that's, that's not fetish. But they come to church. To hear what God is saying. All right, I'm your host, D Foster Three. Don't forget, I want to hear from you. Connect with us, the voice over the globe at gmail.com. The voice over the globe at gmail.com. Make sure you like this, share this, follow it. You can get all of our podcasts, all of our inspirational Sunday morning, the um, voice of hope connection. You can get it. If you don't get it live, you can get it on the replay right here on WPBmedianetworks.com. Until next week, this is D Foster 3 saying peace and God bless. Thank you for being a part of The VoiceOver. Please follow us on all of our social media platforms to stay connected to our upcoming shows and guests. Instagram at The VoiceOver Radio. Twitter at D Prophetic I. That's the letter D, Prophetic E-Y-E. If this show has enriched you in any way, please share The VoiceOver among your circle. Until next time, keep allowing your voice